Hello and welcome back and that is right myself and Eddie are back here to talk to you about SSDs in NAS and with 2024 kicking off pretty lively on the subject of SSDs, thank you very much CES 2024, we thought now is a good time to talk about should you be populating your NAS with SSDs? Hard drives have been around a while, have you seen them? They're actually quite clunky when you think about it and SSDs on the other hand, they're sleek, they're swish, they're fast, they're sexy. So should you be fully populating your NAS with SSDs now instead of hard drive? This is gonna be like our other videos where me and Eddie debate the point. We're gonna take one side each and probably have an argument and hopefully stay friends by the end. Myself, I'm going to be representing populating your NAS with SSDs. Eddie, what are you going to be representing? I'm going to be representing hard drives. And fully populating the NAS with hard drives? Um, you could do mixing, but yeah, I'm going to be on the side of fully populating with hard drives. Nice, absolutely. He's going to be basically the voice of reality, I think, for a lot of you there. that have already got a server that's fully populated with hard drives and have heard lots of bad things about putting SSDs inside your system. So without further ado, let's crack on with the very first point here. And do you know what, Eddie, over to you first. What's the reason someone should be populating their NAS with hard drives still in 2024? Oh, bigger is always better. So well, that's never going to change. And um Nowadays, you can get hard drives at a capacity is like 22, coming out 24 terabyte uh, hard drives. It's enough to have a single hard drive in your NAS, and you have all that you need. Obviously, it's not the best way of backing yeah, up your say, data, yeah. but, but with a single drive, you can actually have a decent backup of everything you own and will own in the next few years because that's a lot of space to store your data. And the price per terabyte, the price per gigabyte pricing, it's hard to argue with that, I guess. When you're looking at the cost of most hard drives right now, I can see why most users would find that appealing. Exactly, because SSD prices are coming down as well. So hard drive manufacturers need to react and they are lowering their prices as well. And it's very difficult to compete with mm. price per terabyte on the hard drive, so, uh, hard drive side. It's so cheap. <laughs> I mean, later this year, it looks like we're going to be seeing more consumer of accessible consumer in you know brackets uh, the accessibility of 30 tb hard drives late this year from the likes of wd and seagate thanks to hamr and eamr uh, recording technology and again the the very thought of 30 tb ssd i mean i've got a mortgage i can't afford that so I, I see what you're saying and i think when it comes to most of these modern NAS systems we've got next to us here most of these systems you know two four eight bays and bigger you know, they are clearly being designed with hard drives in mind. So I kind of see a point there, and I think most users are going to be yelling, I'm not going to use SSDs, it's going to cost me a fortune for a price per terabyte. But, there we are, mad finger in the air. I would say right now, hybrid storage doesn't get anywhere near enough discussion. I think there are users out there that treat the SSD bays on their systems. And if we look at an example here, and I could have pulled any one of the systems on the table there. If you're looking at something like this, a DS43 Plus from Synology, this thing's about four, 450 nicker on a good day. You've got those main storage bays there, and you've got those two M2 bays there, which can now be used for storage pools. And a lot of systems out there allow you to have those tiered storage systems where if you slice off one or two terabytes of the drives you were going to buy, you can go ahead and buy some SSDs and get the best of both worlds for certain utilizations, right? Right. Do you not think that's at least a viable alternative to just going flat out hard drives, man? Of course, the hybrid is a way to go because not always you'll you'll be able to afford fully populating that um, NAS with just SSDs. The other problem would be the size is there going to be enough size even if you do fully populate that uh, is there going to be enough space to put your uh, backup or your project files whatever you want to store there in those uh, limited um you know bays but but sorry to interrupt you again there but let's take that logic a step further because then you've got sata ssds now so you could go ahead and get this system and put two sata ssds inside you could put two NVMe SSDs inside, and you could put two hard drives inside. I have now got a triple tier, hot, warm, cold storage system all in one. If I'd just gone for hard drives, 
I don't think that would have been anywhere near as appealing to me as this triple tiered storage system. Yeah, as long as it's not technology, you can do that. Oh wow, but that is a different video. That is a dig there that I'm sure a number of you know about. And I haven't even got into the performance numbers. That would mean that I could take advantage of a lovely fast area of storage on my NAS and therefore get better performance than hard drives. Yes, if you have fewer bays, like two bay, four bay solution, uh, having SSDs will uh, outperform hard drives. But if you have four or more bays on your NAS, you can just have five or six hard drives set up in the RAID 10 or RAID, RAID 0, whatever RAID you choose, and you can actually get the same speeds as SSD, if not even faster, because yeah, there the, are no overheads. When you've also got the read and write being read from simultaneously, I'll grant you that. You would have to go for quite decent hard drives to match that of storage drives like SSDs. But yeah, the I think a lot of users do seemingly overlook the performance benefits of running multiple hard drives in a single RAID array, reading and writing from it simultaneously. There is obviously still the question of the external network connectivity, and there are users out there that will question the use of SSDs on a NAS if it's only got gigabit Ethernet ports on the rear, because well, they want to see external real world. Performance. But those, those people will argue that IOPS are more important than the speed, which is true. If you're running a web server, you want very quick responses, and hard drives can't deliver that, so you need SSDs for that, or at least SSD caching, mm. to boost this hard drive uh, performance. Sorry, did I, did I just hear us get ever closer to my old friend hybrid storage again? It's not hybrid storage, because SSD originally, I think, was created to boost these hard drive arrays anyway because um, hard drives are better, <laughs> but uh, not always they can be very uh, responsive. So you put a SSD uh, in a bit there, tier, so they could hand take over the, all the strain from hard drives when it's needed, mm. so you can actually do some sort of caching. Frequently as access data would be stored uh, as a copy on SSD, or first data coming into the NAS would land on SSD, so therefore you can um, combine these two worlds. But mm. it wouldn't be like a switching over to one or another. It's just a boost, a cash. But I don't know if you've looked. It's actually um, 2024. Um, and things have changed quite significantly. Uh, and I would say one of the other big changes that I think a lot of users that are living in the world of hard drives exclusively poking fun at SSDs is to do with that old question of durability. Durability of SSDs. It's always been the stick that hard drive people would batter, and I really do mean batter SSD users with, that SSDs, yeah, they're not being durable compared to hard drive. That's the voice they use, that's the voice. SSD durability, I think a lot of users could really stand to check into this, that modern SSDs are a great deal more durable than they've ever been. With SSDs getting higher in performance all the time, we look at Gen 3, Gen 4, Gen 5, hitting 3,000, 7,000, and now 12 to 14, thousand megabytes per second they still manage to maintain that durability uh, drive rights per day of between 0 0.3 all the way up to 1.0 uh, drive rights per day uh, which means you can refresh the whole drive of data every day for those five years and it's fine now most users aren't going to do that most of your hard drive veteran users that have got a uh, nas this four bay over here and they fully populate with a 10 tb so they've got 30 tb of storage in a raid 5 they're not going to fill this thing with 30 TB of storage regularly. That 30 TB of space for a lot of those users is going to last for years. That's going to be one drive write when it's full. And what I'm saying with the SSDs is people that write off SSDs fully populating <coughs> fully populating a NAS with SSDs rather than hard drives, and one of the main reasons they write it off is durability, modern SSDs have become significantly more durable. Yes, because SSDs originally were made for caching as I said mm. so you need your ability that means that you're going to be reading and writing of them so frequently way more frequent than you would do on the hard drive that's why durability is very important so you can just overwrite all the time mm. NT and write again NT and write again forever for hard drives is not the case you want this data uh, to stay there once you have written it you want it to stay as long as possible so then we can touch on the subject called longevity and that means that I can write something on the hard drive, put it on the shelf, and after 50 years I can go there and get that data back. With SSD you can't do that, because you can leave it for two, maybe five years, but if it's not plugged into a some sort of power source, the data will fade out from the SSD and you, your data potentially can be gone. Enterprise co sort of level SSDs, you could shelve them for maybe 10, 15 years, but uh, not much longer, but hard drive, it physically is chiseled in that disk and is gonna be there forever. Um, again, I know there is elements of discussion about this online with different SSD brands highlighting 
the extent to which a, an SSD on a shelf untouched for years will last. And you're right, the you know, numbers do vary from brand to brand to situation to drive to drive. But I would still volunteer that most users that are fully populated in NAS, a NAS, a 24-7 system with SSDs, are probably going to be putting power in that drive. Or well, depends. If you go for a store option, they do something called My Archive, which means you can actually pull one of the bays out or several and just put it on the shelf as a cold storage mm. and then put it back in when, when you're ready to access the data again. In that case scenario, I would agree that SSDs probably wouldn't be suitable for that use. And talking about performance, there's something we should drill into more, which is speeds. Speeds are actually uh, performance, how fast the hard drives are performing. That's actually has gone up a couple, couple of times already since the beginning. I remember mm. it used to be up to 100 megabytes a second. 120, which, 160, something like that. It was yeah. so slow, and I remember. And now it's like it comes close to 300 megabytes a second. And there are new technologies um, coming into market, like dual actuator. I think you have something like yeah. We saw dual arms uh, coming into a game where you can actually read and write data simultaneously mm. using two heads. And so the speeds are actually growing and they might keep growing to something like um, SATA bandwidth. Uh, Full saturation, yeah. yeah, SATA drive. I mean, we've talked about it on the channel before about enterprise grade hard drives comparing Exos and Gold and Pro Series drives versus that. But you're right. I think modern hard drives now are. Most of us glance at hard drives and go, well, the technology's not changed that much. It's actually changed substantially. Things like helium being, uh, you know, c casing these drives, allowing the platters to get even thinner for more storage, but also maintain that performance number. Yeah, I still maintain that if you are going to be utilizing drives of that scale, um, well, of that performance number, and yeah, when you put them in the range, you're going to get those performance numbers. Once you're hitting those sort of, that amount of spending, then I think you should also see how much that will buy you for SSDs. Because returning to SSDs, I mentioned this earlier on, but I do think we should really drill more into that. The price of SSDs have come down quite substantially because much like hard drive technology, which has improved and improved and improved, so has SSD technology. So, for example, if you look at um, SSDs, M2 NVMEs, like this one, this is uh, a TC Team Group Create 1TB drive here. This one, because it's a Gen 3 SSD, now Gen 4 is pretty much mainstream and Gen 5 is now starting to be, you know, appear more and more in the prosumer market. The result is this 1TB SSD is only about two times the cost of a 1TB hard drive. Now, I know that sounds like a lot of money, but... That's not the four to five times the cost that it used to be for hard drives. And this is an SSD that will give you 3,000 megabytes per second. Yes. So I'm saying right now that prices on SSDs, I think users could stand to check because, yes, if you go down very basic comparisons of SATA SSDs, the comparisons of pricing are still three to four times. But then you look at SATA SSDs at the, you know, normal SATA 6 gig, 2.5 inch SSDs. These have also come down exponentially. Yes, prices uh, are coming down. That's why hard drive prices are also dropping. But there is uh, one single problem with these uh, SATA SSDs. You, you're never going to find anything bigger than four terabyte. I think there may be is some sort of 8 terabyte SATA type of SSD. We're using QLC NAND as well. If you want yeah. something bigger, then you'll need something like SAS or U2 SSDs. Those go into terabytes, mm. but you can't use those SSDs into NASes like that. There are several QNAPs that you could, but they cost a fortune. But th that's the problem. Prices are coming down, but the capacity is not. So you can, you're can you looking at ma uh, limits around 4 terabytes per SSD. With hard drives, they're just going to keep on growing 30 terabytes and above. And the last thing which I wanted to mention is about bottlenecks and CPUs and SSDs all in one bunch. In the NAS, yeah. Because if you even fully populate the NAS with SSDs and the CPU is very weak, like our like a real oldest tech or like 3000 Nazis, yeah. series Celeron or Realtek, exactly, you, that CPU will be bottleneck because that SSD can run faster than the CPU can actually take and handle. Mm. So even though if you fill it up with SSDs, you're still going to have limits. I mean, again, when you mentioned limits, I was going to mention this earlier on, but I'm glad I got this on the floor. I hate to give you more ammo, and don't worry, I've got an absolute stonker in the last barrel here. But take this, the Flash Store series from Acer Store. It's a, 
you know, this is the one that's got 2.5 GBE there on the rear. It's got six <coughs> M2 NVMe bays on it, which is great. But that CPU there doesn't have the lanes for, to allow me to take advantage of the full performance. And even if it did, that CPU would still be oversaturated to all hell by this kind of storage. And once you would go into that world of Realtek CPUs, those ARM CPUs that are designed for mobile devices, the idea that that CPU could handle six M2 NVMEs without getting oversaturated, whereas if you put hard drives in, they're designed to be fine with that. Sure, you're still going to get high performance with the SSD, but I'll have to at least acquiesce and agree that an SSD, uh, a NAS system with a weak CPU is not ready for SSDs in the same way. You might make a saving money-wise, but at the same time, okay, sure, you're not going to get that full performance. But... And I am referring to every NAS that get ready. You're about to get destroyed. Um, every NAS on the table there. We're going to talk about this one. Why not? We'll leave that on the table as well. Do you know what those hard drives don't give me? Silence. 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 Right. SSDs. I know we've not even talked really about power consumption, but unfortunately we're not really going to touch on things like power consumption in this video because I think, frankly, that it's going to be heavily dependent on the system they're in. But I tell you right now, if you populate a NAS with hard drives or SSDs, in every single, and I mean this, every scenario, your NAS will run quieter. And if you are in close proximity to a NAS 24-7, SSDs are going to give you silence. They're definitely going to give you the external performance. They're going to give you the internal performance. But more than anything else, they're going to give you silence in these busy, busy times. 2024 is going to be a loud year. And I tell you right now, silence, my friend, is golden. Hard drives, once they go above 8 TB, 10 TB, oh, they get a bit noisy. We did a whole series of videos on this channel. You cannot tell me that if I took this 4 bay over here, fully populated it with 20 TB drives, that it wouldn't drive me close to madness. That is true, but why would you even fill it with 24 terabyte drives? If you're going to run that NAS in a business environment where silence is rarely the case, because normally in this environment we are generating around 50 uh, hertz of you know, mm. noise around us. The NAS usually is, it's, we are talking about 20 decibels. Mm. So you wouldn't even hear that NAS but while you're talking in office environment in the home. If you place that NAS somewhere in your bedroom where you sleep, probably is going to be too loud. But anyway, you can enable uh, uh, hibernation so mm. it goes sleep. Uh, and those r discs will be running only when you're watching a movie or actually working on a computer. So mm. that wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but if you're on some sort of backups during the night and if you sleep next to it, that's going to be an issue. But otherwise, I would recommend going for smaller drives at home environment and enable hibernation, use WD red drives or any other drives you can see the decibels are lower and you'll be just fine. Big drives, that's office, that's I, noise. I, I totally see where you're coming from, but I've got, like, I, I've got to speak on behalf of, and I hate to use the word noob, but I'm going to speak on behalf of the editor noob who has been recommended by their friends to ditch that drobo they've had knocking around and go for a NAS for their video editing or photo editing. All of these users have been sold the virtues of it. They've been told all the storage they can get. And they buy the big hard drives, they buy the NAS, they connect it with 10 GBE directly point to point. And then all of a sudden they go, no one told me about the noise this thing's going to be making. And I think you're right. In certain usage scenarios, in certain case scenarios of a device's architecture, there is an acceptable understanding of what is considered noisy in proximity to a device. But I think we can't just you know, completely... Uh, ignore the fact that larger hard drives make a lot more noise and I think a lot of users home users as media gets bigger 4k 8k the noise of hard drives is a real problem all this architecture is going to the bigger drives the faster drive the dual actuator drives and all that jazz I think it really is uh, something that people aren't talking about enough about the noise of these more modern hard drives when SSDs have remained silent Bottom line, it is going to come down to what best suits your own needs. I'll say right now, in 2024, I think now is the best time I've ever seen for NASes to be populated with SSDs. At least, come on, you have to at least acknowledge there are a lot more NASes arriving from different brands out there with a focus on SSDs more and more, right? They, and NAS brands wouldn't go into this field without a lot of R&D to back them up. NASes are running with the more SSD slots there, and also... Every single NAS I've ever seen in the last five years always has screw holes for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media. That target audience is there. I think I 
personally hope towards the end of 2024 we see a lot more NASs with SSDs inside. I mean, your personal NAS, does it have any SSDs in it at all? Oh, for caching, yes. But otherwise, there's just hard drives. But I understand what you, what you mean. Mm. Uh, technology is moving towards SSD, and I think that's the way to go anyway. It's the noise, it's the speed, and, and IOPS all together. I guess so, before we end the video, are hard drives dead? They're never going to be dead. <laughs> Our tape's dead. <laughs> there we go that is another video we might bung that into another one but thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed this little discussion today we've got a couple more coming up very very soon but apart from that let us know whether your NAS is populated with hard drives or SSD right now is there an argument or a, some, a case point that we haven't made in today's video let us know in the comments but apart from that thank you so much for watching Eddie thanks for coming in once again more discussions to come don't forget to like and subscribe and of course take advantage of the free advice section over on NAS Compares big blue button on the right hand side of the screen where me and Eddie frankly more Eddie will answer your questions completely for free via there or you can take advantage of the Ko-Fi or Patreon where there is expediated support the option to hire either one of us for consultations as well as access to the membership tier where you can get regular access to videos in advance take advantage of our monthly zooms and polls and finally you can go head over to our discord or head over to ask.nas compares for even further support for you and your data storage but apart from that thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time